it like right here. I mean, do you want to jump in or do you want me to jump in? Uh, yeah, if you can. Right. We're shooting this thing. It's electric. But we're also shooting with KSG Sucha, which is super cool. <sighs> there we go. We're in Sydney. This is um, kind of like a crazy dream. Maybe it's because I'm really jet lagged, but we're actually here at World Time Attack at Sydney Motorsport Park, and we have a bunch of amazing and performance cars from Hyundai, but I actually just did a shoot, like a dream shoot, All right. with Keiichi Tsuchiya, mm -hmm. you know, somebody that I looked up to all my life. I got into this culture because of watching Best Motoring, yeah. Watching Option, yeah. watching all those videos, mm -hmm. you know, on VHS. Now, right after I got my driving license, I had a lot of different cars, like the Korean model, JDMs, and uh, German models, M's and AMG's and GTI's. And those are my, actually, how can I say, my asset to build this brand right now at this moment with the N brand. From that being into cars, car culture in Korea, mm -hmm. you've kind of come up the ranks to have this really important role, basically being in charge of the N brand. Mm -hmm. This is like Hyundai's performance mm -hmm. model. Right. And you have almost all of them here, yeah. including the brand new Ionic 5N. So this is actually the first all electric mm -hmm. N model. Right. And what is this actually supposed to be? It's like a kind of like a crossover, mm -hmm. but all, it's also kind of like a hot hatch. Mm -hmm. We thought that we can actually have a different, you know, sensation based on the EV performance. Because at the time when we built it, and a, there are a lot of so-called fast EVs and high-powered EVs. But from our mindset, for as a car enthusiast, we want to build a car that actually have a racetrack capability and also corner rascal and then everyday performance with the emotional performance together. Because most of the time, the EV doesn't have emotional things, like, you know, it doesn't have a sound and so on and so forth. And it's kind of related to the rest of the cars that you guys have right, here. Right. It's about performance mm -hmm. on a budget. It's not just about pure horsepower. Right. It's about driving feel. Right. So my experience, forgive me, I'm kind of a dummy when it comes to the N performance line. My experience is with the Genesis Coupe. Mm -hmm. You know, so when that launched in the US okay, yeah. in 2008, yeah. it was a big deal, yeah. you know, because it was nice to be able to have another rear wheel drive performance car. Mm -hmm. You have a turbo two liter version and then 3.8 liter V6. That was a game changer, you know, especially because at the time, Reese Millen was competing in Formula Drift sure, eventually sure. with that yeah, vehicle. That yeah. And of course, the most craziest thing happened, he actually won Pikes Peak overall and broke the overall record in a drift car. After he won Formula Drift in 2012 uh, at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, he put the car in the trailer, went to Pikes Peak, and then won overall. So the performance aspect and the, the potential. potential has always been in the brand identity. Mm -hmm. But now you guys just take it to the next level, especially with the i20. What I know about that car, yeah. right, because that's a car, unfortunately, we don't get in the US. Yeah, unfortunately. But we know it so well because that's like the base for the WRC car. Mm -hmm. Let's first of all talk about this. What's okay. the 
What's the main difference between this versus just the regular non end? The main difference here, as I told you before, we actually put our N3 pillar into Ionic 5, the normal motor. Ionic 5 is, you know, for like family purpose, and, but instead of having this normal purpose of very calm car and very good quality car, we actually would like to put fun factor in this car. So, and that's why this even has a drift mode. Yeah, yeah, drift, drift, yeah. drift optimizer yeah. and also the drift model that we built it together. So basically, this car has 650 PS. 650 50 PS, yeah. This? Yeah, this, 478 kilowatts. That's like, what, almost three times more powerful than... Yeah, so for example, we have 280 PS on the normal ICN model, uh -huh. and then 204 PS I20N we can say like more than double. For example, yeah. like two, 280, from 280 to 650 with the four wheel drive. So, but then this is four wheel drive, then how does it drift? It's very, very simple. Uh, having the power exponentially within the EV is easier than the IC. However, making the balance itself, it's the tough task. And also making and endure it on the racetrack is another tough task. Some EVs are not performing well on the racetrack after one or two laps and because of the, you know, the temperature and then also the cooling. But this one, you know, we manage the battery temperature and motor temperature to survive at the racetrack. Uh, is the suspension and the braking, mm -hmm. this stuff is different too. Than, yeah, so for example, like, you know, we have a physical brake system, right? This is a 400 millimeter rotor and four piston, you know, uh, caliper. Instead of having like different, you know, set of um, calipers and pistons, we actually thought differently. Because if we are using the regenerative braking, and we can actually reduce the stress on the, the physical brake. Ah, oh, right. Yeah, so we actually thought differently to, to oh, Konayan is going over with the Chuchi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great. I guess I should probably drive soon too, but this is gonna be kind of a, a buffet of sorts uh -huh. because I'm going to be able to drive each one of these cars mm -hmm. one by one. Mm -hmm. The i20N, the i30N. That way I can kind of try each one yeah. all the way up to the big daddy, the most power the Ionic 5N. Yeah, so you know I actually recommend you to put the end button right right after you're on the track. And then each one of these have like a lap timer built in. Yeah, huh? lap timer and everything. So for example like you know we are in Australia, right? Mm -hmm. So we can choose the Australian racetrack. So for example, if you are in Bend Motorsports Park, mm -hmm. then you can also download the Bend. Mm -hmm. But now we are here at the City Motorsports GPS you know reads where you are and you know display this Sydney Motorsports Park. So also we have different courses in the Sydney Motorsports Park. So first course, like short course, like oh, south course. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, this is what, you know, Chuchia KG is driving, like yeah. 1.8 kilometers long. Oh. Yeah, and also, for example, like when you go back to the N setting. Wait, this makes a sound? Yep, in interior and exterior as well. And E shift now I'm activating. What? Not only the Wait, sound, so not only the sound, but also the shifting. Where did you get that sound? Is it like a okay. sound that's created? So, by... for example, an active sound. Uh -huh. We call it three different sound: ignition, uh -huh. evolution, and supersonic. Okay. Based on our 2.0 turbo engine and also evolution. This is a cool story that I can tell you. Evolution means like you know, a very sporty sound of electric and motor, but we actually developed this sound in 2015. It's not any uh, like piston engine sound. Yeah, so, like but this one different... is like with the pop and bangs. <laughs> We're doing all the fun evolution so and supersonic is a jet like. fighter sound. Okay, let's hear it. Interesting. It's, it's just, so this is just all for driver experience. Yeah. It doesn't make you go any faster in any way, but it's just about yeah, the most, experience. most important thing is that, you know, if you're thinking about the traditional so-called fast EV, they, they don't have any you know, shifting and they don't have any sound. But the most important thing is that we actually 
mix match with the sound and you know shifting with the proper jockey. So this is the fun part to make the car and driver into one. Got it. That is so cool. <laughs> well, where where does the sound actually come from? Where's the speakers? So sound is going out underneath of the bumper. So we do have one external speaker right under the bumper right here and one in one from the front so for example if you want to hear the engine sound it pops up it creates from the in the front majorly and if you want to have a pop and bang and all the exhaust note is from the rear speaker interesting yeah and there he is the man the myth the legend keiichi suchia <laughs> Definitely appreciate you having us here to try out all these cars, mm -hmm. but also just supporting car culture and supporting motorsports in general. I think that's just awesome that a manufacturer is doing that. Yeah, even though we started a little bit later than other you know brands, but we actually want to build the entire ecosystem. So, for example, like you know, we don't want to just sell the Ionic 5N, and we want to build the ecosystem. For example, like just like I told you before. We are contacting and we are building the infrastructure for fast charger in each symbolic racetrack in each different countries. And also we are building up for the young drivers with our motorsports program. And just like you know that we are in the WRC, we are in the WTCR and local you know, TCR series. Awesome. Well, KG is just pushing really hard and I, I got to join him on track soon. So thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. I just have a couple questions. Is this his first time drifting an electric car? Yeah, it is. It's his first time to drift in an electric car. What does he think about drifting an electric car? EV no kuruma drift do deska. In the world, there's no SUV, EV car with a drift mode. Only this one. Yeah. Yeah. And he said Hyundai one. So Hyundai is the only one that has it. So he said that's really fantastic. Yeah. Okay. It's cool because even though it's not a um, internal combustion engine, no clutch, you know, no e-brake, you can still drift, which is pretty crazy. clutch <laughs> there. The side brakes got an idea, EV, the more drift the kill, it's going to be a lot more. I'm going to be a lot more. I'm going to be a lot So, because of the weight, it's heavy. That weight shift alone allows you to, to uh, drift the car to initiate it. This is unreal. <laughs> the fact that Hyundai is letting me and Keiichi Suchia just have like a kind of like a buffet of sorts, taking each one of these cars out. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the uh, i20N. This is the only stick shift model that they have here. And this is pretty much what the WRC car is based off of. This is actually one of the ones that I'm most excited about driving because it's sporty, you know, it is lightweight. Um, it doesn't have the most power. It actually has the least power out of all these, but it's also the lightest weight, so should be fun to drive. I've never driven here at Sydney Motorsport Park, and I don't really drive right-hand drive that much, so it'll be interesting to see if I can get used to it. <laughs> All right, going out. Oh my God, he's drifting. I gotta chase him down. All right, let's go. <laughs>
man, that thing is so much fun. We just drove the Hyundai i20N and um, that was so much fun. I mean, anytime I get to drive on track is a fun time. But the fact that they're letting us drive each and one of these to the absolute limit. I mean, I went off in the grass, I'm cutting the corners, I'm braking as late as possible. I'm just really giving her the beans. I'm not letting off in any way at all. I kind of just want to push it and have some fun, you know? That's kind of the point of us being out here. Uh, and obviously, Keiji Suchia is doing the same thing. He's pushing it so hard, getting it sideways every one of these corners. And it is so cool to see. Um, the fact that I'm kind of doing something similar to what he's doing is, uh, is kind of a pinch me, I must be dreaming moment. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. So I'm gonna jump into another car and see how it goes. Family car. Mm -hmm. This thing is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Four seaters. Uh, yeah. So you can have fun. We the the track's already on it. Yeah. Well, alternatively, with all the tech, oh, cool. just do one All right, just got out of the four-door i30, and and uh, it's just so much fun. This one especially, like going over the hill, top of fourth gear. I am just hawking this thing in. There's just no regard for the edge of the track or anything it just kind of like gets back you know with the traction so much fun and you could see this front straight area here third gear I'm just full crank just trying to gain traction to go back up the hill so much fun you could hear the tires squealing this is actually a lot of power and for a four-door so much fun to drive personally I like the i20 more because it is manual and it's a lot lighter it has less power, but so much fun to drive. You said to drive it like I stole it. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Actually, look, I'm going to twist the seatbelt so I don't slide around so much. <laughs> Here we go. I'm definitely sure I got this on two wheels, not three wheels. I hit the curb over there and it, it felt so light. I was like, uh-oh. And it, it was definitely on two wheels. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the Kona N, which is I guess the SUV version. But because of the close ratio transmission and it being more power than the i20, it's actually pretty fun. All right, so now I am in tonight's feature and main event is the Ionic 5N. And this is fully electric. And as you guys saw, Keiji Suchia was like just full on drifting this. And um, 
they're gonna let me try this so this is a prototype so it's not finalized so definitely have to take that into consideration when I'm driving it but I'm gonna take it out and see how it goes I'm good, sorry. Look at no problem, I'm no problem. So sorry. You're fine. If you are fine, no problem. Yeah. Maybe too much fun? Yeah. <laughs> it just came out on me. I mean, yes. I'm I mean, sorry. it happens. It's alright. You got a pen? Yeah, somebody has a pen. Right? Oh, we got a pen. Yeah. Please. Too much, too much. That's to put it back in the suitcase. Yeah. Yeah. That's too, much. too much sliding. Yeah. On. <laughs> we need your signature. Yeah. Right here. Here? Go. They're just signing the body work. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Hi. No worries. No worries. No worries. I apologize. Very minor um, damage. Yeah. Emotional damage. I know. You saved it. You that saved was it. emotional damage. <laughs> sorry. This has so much power. <laughs> I told you. I told you. When you're getting out. I, I didn't expect it to have that much power. Oh, yeah. You yeah. mean have yes but, but, or... but, but the most important thing is that did you have fun? It was fun up until then. Yeah, yes. I can tell. I can tell. I can't believe how much power it has. Mm -hmm. Six hundred fifty. Yes, that's a lot. Yes, yeah. and it feels like an ice car. Yeah. Of course, and also the, the shifting and also the sound, right? Yeah. Six hundred fifty with this kind of your know, price range, you will never get it. It's gonna be interesting to feel what it feels like as a passenger. Well, it it, it it's funny that being a passenger, I like. Even if we go the exact same speed as one another, it always feels faster in the passenger seat. Yeah. <laughs> How was it in a straight line? Felt quick? It's fast. <laughs> it's sonic boom. Dude. <laughs> that's that it, so crazy. that's a gear shift. I think we need to try this. Oh wow, it's loud, hey. so bizarre it's changing like changing a gear it yeah. legitimately sounds like a video game and then what's ignition that's the like normal car sound oh, yeah kind of grabs and then goes yeah It's crazy the gear change, it almost feels like it's hesitating on the gear as well. Yeah. It's unlike anything else.
brakes are responsive, turns good. You can really feel it. Apply the power and squat and grip on the accelerator too, which is excellent. It's a big bump here, see how it rides that. Easy. All right, Mike, so what do you think? I am beyond impressed. I was just saying that when I first saw just the Ionic 5, I thought, man, that is a cool car. I'm into the way that looks. There's nothing else that looks like it. It's like what an EV should look like instead of all these kind of other like weird looking cars. And then when I heard there was an N version, I thought, okay, I'm, I'm paying attention to this. And now that I've driven it, I, I want one. What about you? Well, so the crazy thing about this is this is of its era, right? Like maybe two decades, three decades from now, we won't need anything like this. This is like the in-between for transitioning ICE enthusiasts into electric enthusiasts. Yeah, I said that I think anybody that drives this car will be enthusiastic about it, no question. And they'll be impressed. It is wickedly fast. I mean, it is a rocket ship. It feels super nimble. I can't believe that a car that can weigh what this does, not that it's excessively heavy, but it, it's an EV. It's gonna have weight to it. And the fact that it does handle as nimbly as it does is incredible. You know, what blows me away is like the stepping stones. You know, you look at their entry level N model, which is the i20. It, you look at this, this has so much more power. It, it's like crazy. Ridiculous. So what is it, 650 ish? 650 PS. Unfortunately, I drove it and I tagged the wall because I ran out of talent because this has too much power. If you hadn't signed it, no one would know. There'd be no evidence, really. <laughs> I mean, this is the most impressive wall tap anybody's ever had. I, I just, you know, this is one of those things where it's like, did not want to do that. Most embarrassing thing ever. Did not want to touch anything, but unfortunately ran out of talent, happened, car stepped out but because got, it has so much power. It does, but you got back on the horse. I did. And it was a blast, right? So much fun, <laughs> so much fun. And um, you could definitely trick somebody if they didn't really know too much about cars. Absolutely. If they got in it and you just told them that it was a fast car and it was naturally aspirated or whatever, they would believe you. There's no question you could fool somebody. They would never know. And the craziest, honestly, the thing that really blew me away was the rev limiter. It feels like a real rev limiter, like a violent one. Yeah. And the, the, with the kind of digital shifting, I don't know what the proper name for it is, but the synthesized gear shifts and that whole like weight transfer when it happens too. I mean, it's just, it, the entire sensation is incredible, unreal. What's even crazier is it's, it's only for people of this era because realistically it's way faster if you get rid of all that, yeah, yeah. no noise, no speakers, nothing, and it just keeps accelerating. It speaks to their effort to convert enthusiasts to understand that this is as good as it is, right? It's, it's almost their version of trickery to get guys like you and me who love that sound and that feeling and that full manual control to get behind the wheel of this and give it a fair shot versus just kind of writing it off from the get-go. So then just last week, I had a chance to do my first ever EV race. I, I drove a Tesla Model 3 and it was like 12 cars and they all had to have their power like basically taken down so they could last the whole race. And it was fun. I had a lot of fun. You know, car would step out. I would pass people. It was so much fun. The thing that I really missed was the sound. I could just hear tire, tire noise and this kind of filled that void. It's, it's so interesting. It's something that we didn't think we needed until we lost it. Yep, and honestly, I was skeptical that I would enjoy a synthetic sound like that, and it was three turns in before I was completely immersed, and I forgot about what was real or what wasn't. Same thing with the shifting. I mean, is any of it necessary? No, but again, it, it just, I think, really speaks to the fact that it is as much an enthusiast vehicle as it is anything else. It's here for guys like us, which is cool. Yeah, it's super cool. And it is like a hot hatch. Like that's kind of the shape of it. Absolutely. You know, it's a little bigger than a lot of hot hatches that we're used to, but that's kind of the essence of it. 
I, I have like, I feel like it, there's a lot of flavors of, like if you get the right angles, there's like some Lancia Delta in there and things like that. Some of those really cool kind of angular boxy four door hatches. And I, I think it fits the bill. It's yeah. And there's a little bit of a touch of the um, prototype that we all like, the, the 70, is it the 74? Oh yeah, the 74, yeah. yeah. The 74 is something that, can you guys build the 74 already? Oh, I cannot tell you. Envision 74 was our dream because, you know, since the beginning of the end brand, we actually thought, thought about the, you know, hydrogen hypercar concept. And after seven years after we actually built from our imagination, we really built the one prototype. And nothing can, not uh, everything can be happened. So, so what I'm hearing is these videos, we, we these got to be good, so we get invited back when that car actually. Well, you'll get invited yeah, back. But, I won't get yeah, invited yeah, back. Don't. This, <laughs> this is what we were doing at end. So yeah. you know, imagination and courage. So if there's a something that we actually want to think about and to and you know have it, then we will try it until the end. Yeah, I'll that's tell you what. what we're doing. When they invite you back, I'll ride passenger. Okay, so you can deal. take me around in the 74. It's a deal, it's a deal, I'm in. Well, enjoy your drive. I know you're gonna drive again. I'm going again. Yeah, Can't enjoy it. Me. Hey, thanks for watching. If you wanna support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.